Well, friends, we're continuing the story of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat gets involved in a marriage alliance with Ahab, who is the king in the north. He's, of course, not a very good king. He's a, actually a very wicked king. We've read about him before in other places. So uh, he has this arrangement with Jehoshaphat where we really have to question, Jehoshaphat, why are you, why are you doing this? Why, why would you have anything to do with such a wicked king as Ahab? Ahab entices him into uh, actually getting involved in some warfare. He says, uh, will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? in order to conquer that place, in order to win a battle, you know. And Jehoshaphat says, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. I mean, is, is that sensible? Is that really a good idea to be in league with this evil man? Now, Jehoshaphat, to his credit, says, well, look, inquire first of the Lord. Find out. And so... Ahab has 400 prophets. They all say the same thing. They say, they, uh, they say uh, go up, for God will give it into the hand of the king. Yes, go in battle. You're going to be victorious. And somehow there must be something about the way these guys have, have brought their decision to the two kings that makes Jehoshaphat say, well, is, is there not another prophet of the Lord of whom we may inquire? It's like, these 400 not enough? Well, no, because they're not real prophets, see? So is, is there a real one there? And they go and get Micaiah. Now, the, Ahab's not at all interested in what Micaiah has to say. He says, he's always saying bad things about me. Joshua said, well, you better go get him and find out what he says. Now, amazingly, what happens, long story short, but what happens is that Micaiah tells him the truth eventually. And the truth is that there was a council in heaven and one of the spirits suggested, look, here's how we're going to get Ahab and here's how we're going to bring him to his death right now. I'm going to send a spirit and put it into all these false prophets of Ahab and they will, as one man, tell Ahab to go up and, and go into battle here. But all of this is disaster. The Lord has de decreed disaster against Ahab. So eventually, a little circuitous route, but eventually Micaiah tells him the truth about this. And what does Ahab do? But he takes Micaiah and he uh, orders his guards to put, put him in prison and feed him with meager rations of bread and water until I return in peace. And Micaiah says to Ahab, if you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. Hear all you people. So he speaks to the rest of the people that are there. Now, they, now here's the amazing thing. I would think Jehoshaphat, he's actually a good king. And now he has this bad idea of being in league with Ahab. But after he's heard this word from Micaiah, don't you think Jehoshaphat would have been smart to sort of step back from all this and say, you know what? I don't think we should go right now. But that's not what happens. He continues with his plan to go with Ahab. And even he continues with his plan, though Ahab has a an idea that the king, uh, you know, this king Ahab shares with Jehoshaphat. He said, I will disguise myself and go into battle so no one will know that I'm Ahab. But you wear your robes. And you know what that's going to mean? It's going to mean that He's going to look like the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat's going to look like the king. Ahab looks just like a normal guy who's there. So what happens is that as this battle commences, um, the, the warriors of Syria are instructed that they should just go after the king of Israel. And they see Jehoshaphat, they assume this is the king of Israel. <laughs> but Jehoshaphat cries out, and, well, the Lord helped him, and God drew them away from him. Meanwhile, the man who was hiding in just plain clothes, Ahab, well, he ends up dying. A certain man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the scale armor and the breastplate. So imagine that. This just happens. 
And Ahab, well, he goes to his death. You know, at sunset he died. That's how the chapter ends. And Jehoshaphat lives. And you would think, I hope he's learned his lesson. Now, you see, we have a king who was never in league with evil at all. He made no peace with evil. No, he defeated evil. And he won a great victory for us. Lord, thank you for Jesus, who is so honest and true, a great prophet, the very word of God, and, and a holy and righteous king for us. We're grateful, Father, for him. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.